morning, Westeros. And welcome to our Morning Throners podcast. I'm Nelson. I'm Jeff. And I'm Kyle. And we're the fucking Morning Throners. And welcome back to another episode of your favorite Song of Ice and Fire podcast. We are your Morning Throners with Aria 13 on deck. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Uh, I don't know. I kind of had mixed feelings on this one. Ooh, I, it, was, it was good. I think it was good enough. Dive in. You happy? You're sad? I mean, You're mad? You're glad? Yeah, uh, yeah, all the above, right? Like, so I mean, the, the, trying to think of how to say it, I guess. All the I, while you're thinking, Jeff, give us a synopsis. So Let's get that out of the way. Ari and the Hound come into an inn. They meet up with her old friends, Paul the Tickler and a Squire. Get in a little scuffle. Arya pops off, and <laughs> the Hound takes some some licks. She bails on him to find a uh, galley going to somewhere else. Bravo sits, or they're from the free cities at least. Yep. Yeah, so like I guess that's kind of that's kind of where the mixed feeling comes in. Is I like the whole Jamie Brienne dynamic, like that was fun, right? I mean, I know we're getting to the end of the book, but like to have another one of those kind of break up, <laughs> like it's kind yeah. of like unfortunate, right? The dynamic duos are breaking up, and it seemed like they were kind of changing each other as well like that was kind of the whole that, that's the whole reason these characters have been together and you know it, it kind of like it didn't seem a fitting end to it at, at the very least not, not that i'm saying i think that yeah. the hound is ended but i mean if we just think back on all of your aria predictions throughout the book you're like she gets to river run she gets to <laughs> yada yada she gets to like she's gotta go they're gonna go and then now like you're saying they, they do split up so i could see how from like your expectations of where her story was going to now, yeah, you know, they're not together. It'd be a, a little upsetting or just not fulfilling. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's yeah. She, exactly. she never gets where she's going, and even here, kind of at the end of the book, she doesn't get where she wants to go. She wants to go to the wall, and there, she kind of just seems like she's just going to be like, "All right, whatever, just let me on board, and I'll I'll go where you're going." <laughs> it's kind of like what it seems like yeah. by the end. I have to go somewhere. Yeah. So we'll get that. We'll get there. I guess mm-hmm. that's that's. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Nels, do you like the chapter? Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, cover some good stuff. Again, this is one better, of the things I think I've, better show scene. I've mentioned before. I do really like the show scene of the, the hound in the inn. He has some like good one liners that aren't. Just, in the, he's just got some good lines. It's just yeah. good acting and good good uh, good writing by the show. Just a, a couple added deals in, but I don't think it's pretty much the same thing happens. Just like a few extra lines. I was going to say interesting thing about where this starts is we're at. The end of the crossroads, which is like the end where Cat captures Tyrion. Tyrion, the end where yeah. when Tyrion comes back from the Eyrie, where they're like basically camped up out before the Battle of the Green. And this is where Arya almost gets captured, right? Uh, where With Arya almost Gendry gets, is that was a different one. That is the end of the kneeling. That was that's different. That's kneeling, closer man. to River Run. Yeah, this one's near Heron Hall. We got a map. I'll show it a little bit later. Uh, so we've been here before. Arya is even like skeptical of this place walking up, like. Well, there's like bones of somebody dead hanging yeah. from like the signposts. She's like, that's not that's new, right? Well, new for her. This this was Marsha Heedle's body. So this was like a woman that Kat had remembered always kind of owning this inn. Tyrion had seen the dead body when he was here last. It was kind of more fresh. He could tell okay. who it was. He knew it was at the innkeep. And then now it's the body's still there, but it's just bones. So you can't even really recognize yeah. it. But that's what Arya's seeing now. She knew there were lady bones somehow. Yeah. And Ari's like, we shouldn't go in this place. There's ghosts in there. I'm not going in. Yeah, Ari's like, fuck this place. Let's not go in there. And he's like, fuck that. I Hound's like, I need, I need a drink. We're going in. I don't give a fuck what's. And he's. It kind of seems like he's demoralized he of how the plan has been thwarted too. He's like, fuck it. I don't care. Like someone I sees feel like me he right now. He kind of knew he was going to run into somebody in here, right? Like it seemed like he wanted this interaction. I just don't know if me. he cares anymore. He's like, I've been working yeah. my tail off to drop this girl off. Like. I I need a glass of wine. I don't care if they see me. Like yeah. I'll fight anybody. Uh, you want to get in a bar yeah. fight? Like let's go. But I'm I'm getting this this wine right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, he goes in. Arya's base. He's like, you can wait out here if you don't want. And she's like, thinks about it. And she takes the horses to the stable and goes in after him. Yeah, and that was her worry. She was like, he's gonna get spotted. Like, and he's again, he's the one of the few that we know of in the realm that like. Oh shit! You're huge with a burned face. Everyone knows who you are. You're the Hound. Yeah, and he's not very far from King's Landing, right? Like, yeah, this is pretty close to like where he knew a ton of people. 
So, like, I'm sure he knows somebody. Yeah, we're, we're a stone throw from Heron Hall. Not that close, but we're pretty close. Okay, Heron Hall. All right, so they, she walks in, and she immediately spots Poliver, who is fondling a girl, and the Hound also is spotted by Poliver, too, right? Like, she recognizes Poliver, Poliver recognizes the Hound, and they just kind of go back to their old, like, Lannister men way of talking about things, right? Yeah. This is kind of what I was getting at, I guess, when it seemed like he wanted to be here, because, like, he immediately, like, went into, like, old chum, give me all the information you got kind of situation. Well, I don't like, think I, it's They didn't seem chum. like best friends. I, I know, but I mean... Just, like, like, trying to fit in, like, all right, dude, like... Like, I know you, like, you know me, like... It's kind of like going back to your old high school bar, and you see, you know... Okay. You're, you're not a friend from high school, but like obviously you know him. You're like, all right, like, hey, how you how you got been? A conversation, like, yeah. You got you got a job in the family. All right, that's enough. Let me let me drink my wine. The weird thing here, though, is right. These guys work directly for Gregor, who it, we don't know a ton about it, but we know that the relationship there isn't great. Even when the hounds kind of like, yeah, I'm gonna leave here. They're like, nah, why don't you come back with us? Like, <laughs> it's pretty clear, yeah. I think the, your brother the relationship like is you. worse than I mean the hounds have led on that it's been pretty bad but I, he hates him for sure yeah I but I feel like yeah this is like you're wanted by your brother pretty much exactly that's kind of how like, it seems from these two guys or at yeah. least like our brother your brother would be happy with us if we brought you and he did bail like he bailed on Joffrey right so I mean I'm sure is did they ever do anything like did they put a price on the hound or. Uh, I don't know that we After one Black that Black. we know about. Like, I'm sure they would be happy to get him back. Like, Cersei would be yeah. torturing him or something, Black probably. Black but got, yeah, 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 I don't know. I don't it's remember. I just we know about. Remember. Yep. Uh, so there's also two other guys there with Poliver. So there's a young looking squire, and then she uh, recognizes the other guy that is the tickler. Yep. Are we supposed to recognize the squire? I don't think so. I I didn't have any okay. notes. Mm. Uh, yeah, but besides that, there are like a few girls and some field hands. They leave when things start to get weird. There's yeah. also the yep. innkeep, right? So the innkeep at first, he's basically, basically like, uh, I don't want any trouble when things kind of <laughs> get awkward when the hound shows up. He's like, I don't want any trouble, sir. And the hound's like, don't call me sir. Yep. I point that out because it's interesting that Poliver and the tickler and them have a nickname for Gregor. Sir. Sir. They just call him sir. They just call him sir, right? Because none of these guys are knights. They're all like sellsword free riders i guess would be the right term for them like okay they're men at arms they're soldiers but none of them are knights they're all good fighters clearly they're, they're going toe-to-toe with the hound at least Poliver is but like they're not knights so the one knight in their group they're all like sir <laughs> so, so they're like sir wouldn't wouldn't be happy if we let you slip through our fingers sir blah blah blah, blah. so i think that also might be a little point to why the hound really doesn't like getting called Sir is because okay. it's kind of like yeah, brother's yeah, name. Don't call me by his name. Reminds me of his brubba. Yeah, exactly. Brother. That's funny. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the hound gets a, a flagon of wine. He starts chugging while talking to, to Poliver. Well, at first, the boy is talking shit. The little squire is talking shit to the hound. He's like, oh, oh right, is this the right. puppy that ran off when it got a little hot? Yeah. And the tickler like puts oh, yeah, a hand on him like, chill out, bro. <laughs> Easy now. Which is yeah. kind of funny, though, because like, it seems like I don't I don't know that anything set them off, right? Like other than he didn't want to go with them. So like I, I don't know. I guess yeah. like the the squire goading him, like the, it's not like the like the tickler was like, I ah, don't fuck with him. Like he's all right, he can go free, you know, and then it changes somewhere along the way. It's You're like, right. It's, I don't it know seems why like they're very cautious it. at the beginning and then it's somewhere that flips. Uh Arya assume see Arya does make the note like he's oh fuck, this guy's drunk. Like we haven't eaten. He just drank a fuck ton of wine. There's nothing like. And they. And, okay. So you're saying. So I was actually saying the opposite because it seemed like they were. It definitely seemed like they were a little standoffish at first. Like that. Like I'm saying. But like it also seemed like I, I couldn't find a spot where it would flip. So I, I guess it I didn't. don't think they wanted to fight him. Okay. But because like I think he's pretty revered as a good fighter too. Like. Sure. But oh, yeah, once sure. once he decides that I'm not going with you. You're gonna have to force me to go. With, I think that was basically it. Which, I mean, you're like throwing a knife at him. Probably isn't yeah. the way if you if you connected. Like if you hit him, you you kill him. Like that's the. But whatever. Yeah. Like, I think at the end of the day, if they went back and like, hey, Gregor, like we found your brother, we had to kill him. Uh, yeah. Whatever. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, who knows? If they were, if they would have went back and been like, hey, we just let your brother go. I think that would like Mountain probably snaps him in half. Yeah. You just don't say anything at that point, but. Yeah. yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, so that uh, the so they did get he did. Sorry, you're good. 
Nope, I don't have any conversation, so you, you take it. I was just going to say, yeah, the boy is talking shit. The hound looked at him but doesn't really say anything, just gives him like an evil eye. Things are starting to get a little tense. Polliver pushes the girl up. He's a big dude, too. He's almost as big as the hound, and he's basically trying to make excuses for the kid. He's drunk. Don't worry about it. And he's like, oh, then he shouldn't shouldn't drink. And the kid's like, oh, the puppy doesn't scare me. Tickler twists his ear to shut the kid up. I think that's when the wine shows up. He chugs. He tells the innkeeper, like, if you want any money today, you better pick up the coppers that I dropped on the ground because you're not getting any money from these guys. And they're like, oh, we're going to pay. We're going to pay after we leave. Yeah, we pay. We pay. We, we started the tab. <laughs> He's like, no, you're going to tickle the innkeep and find out where he keeps his gold like you always do. And the innkeep remembered something in the kitchen and ran, <laughs> ran off. That's what the, hell, the Ari says. <laughs> He's out. Yep. So as things get weird after this, and that's, that's when everyone else starts to leave. Yeah. Uh, and Arya starts to use her eyes. She starts seeing, and she sees the Polyverse carrying three blades, a sword, a dagger, and then a blade that's too long to be a dagger, but too short to be a sword. Yeah, too short to be a... Or too a long dirt. to be a dirk, too but same thing, yeah. She doesn't mention, mention knowing it's needle at this point, but later she goes right yeah. for it, so I'm guessing... It, and it felt... Yeah. And it feels right in her hand. I think. <laughs> yeah. Kyle, did you did you think of anything? I mean, I, I didn't hear, but in, when once it said it felt right in her hand, I was like, oh, then it's probably needle, and then like the next thing was like, needle, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I, I had forgotten, I guess, that... Well, she mentions needle somewhere in here as well, in between. Like, it did, I, she remembered how its needle slid in somebody's chest or something oh, like that. Oh, gotcha. When she, yeah, when she killed the stable boy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, once once she mentioned it again, I was definitely like, oh, I bet that was needle. Yep. Yeah. All right, so Polliver starts giving us some news that we obviously know. Maybe Kyle didn't understand that Sir was the Malin at this point. I mean, I understood it, but I didn't think it. Was, I didn't think anything of it. How's yeah. that? Like, yeah, yeah. I didn't think it was weird that they just called him Sir like that. I yeah, mean. yeah. Uh, so he got called back to King's Landing, and Joffrey died at his own wedding, which was news to the Hound Arya. and Arya. Yeah, she thinks she should feel happy, but she's like, "Well, if Joffrey's dead, but Rob's also dead. So, like, does it really like who are we even cheering for at this point? Like, I don't even. I don't have a yeah. horse in this race anymore. Yep. And then she finds out that Tyrion and Sansa were the suspected. Uh, Sansa got away because she is a wolf with wings and flew out of there. <laughs> she she killed the killed him with a spell, yeah, and then flew turned into a wolf and grew wings and yeah. flew away. Yeah, I love that Arya's just like she doesn't know any spells. You stupid. She she knows the songs, no no magic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and at one point later, Arya's like, "Damn, I wish I could grow, turn into a wolf with wings like like Sansa yeah. does." Yeah, I mean, I, she doesn't know. I guess where the the journey Sansa's been on, right? Like, yeah. so. I could see where she's at. At the same time, it it is still kind of far. I mean, this story is obviously far fetched for what Sansa can accomplish. But I will say the winged wolf is an interesting thing. It doesn't come up a ton of times, but kind of like when Jojen comes to meet Bran the first time, he basically says, "I came here because I had visions of a winged wolf that was chained mm. to the ground, and I had to set it free." So it almost sounds like okay, Jojen yeah. is like like setting the the winged wolf free is like letting the Starks do magic stuff, right? Um, somewhat. So some people, I think, take this to be like, oh, is Sansa going to become more magic -y? kind of like Bran did? But who knows? Okay. No. No. <laughs> she doesn't have a wolf, so that makes it's kind of a problem there. But yeah. Uh, so they she also find, hears that they got married. She's like, what the fuck? Sansa would never marry Ty uh, Tyrion. Yeah. Um, and then we hear how they took Heron Hall. They re really just kind of walked in th in the back door, right? Cook opened it because, yeah, because they uh, Hoot cut off his foot. So he said, fuck this guy. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Like, yeah, sure. Come on in. And most people had run off when they heard that they were coming. Like They were just like, yeah, but that the mountains on the way were out. Just like abandoned Vargo. Because Vargo is already fucked up because Brienne bit his ear. Remember, we'd heard last we'd heard of him. He was like his ear was he was like dying. He right? was getting infected. Yeah, he had an ear, <laughs> ear infection. Yeah, not the, the normal the way. same thing the mountain had going on. Yeah, probably to a lesser extent. Exactly. Brandon have poison in her mouth, but yeah, true. So and it's also funny in there. The Hound does not like Tyrion, right? They're like when he hear, hears about the thing, he's like, "Oh, he, she left Tyrion behind to she, take she the punishment." She should burn him with wildfire, right? Well, yeah. I mean, we knew the Hound doesn't like Tyrion because the Hound burned the Blackfire with wildfire with when like he had to leave. Yeah, right? well, and, and like I said, we knew he didn't like Tyrion because like Tyrion was really pushing him at the the Battle of uh, Blackwater. Exactly, with the wildfire. He's right? like, get he's the like, fuck back out there, you know, and like, yeah, he's like, no, fuck you, imp. 
So like the last we knew of him, he was like in a heated argument with him. Yeah, I think that's why he's saying this punishment too. Is like fuck him. He, that's what he deserves. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, making me go into that shit during the Blackwater. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So they got in there. They basically killed everybody except for the cook who opened the door when they got into Heron Hall. They basically killed everybody except for the cook that opened the door. Some girls to warm their beds. Is that where Gendry still was? Uh, no, he was with Barrick and them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Running around. So why? Does she seem to care? She's like, all the rest? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if you can answer. So I'm not sure either. Uh, maybe she just liked some people there. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, she knew some people, I'm sure. I don't really know why else she would really care. Like, Hop High didn't stay there either. Okay. He stayed at the end of the Kneeling Man, so those are the two people I think she might care about. I mean, maybe just the, the people that were getting tickled alongside that were yeah. cleaning stairs and shit. Like, I don't yeah, know. like all the help that had nothing to do with anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because there yeah. was a lot of people because it was so big, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we get an update on what's going on at River Run with the Blackfish. He yep. is under siege, and Old Man Frey is going to hang Edmure if they don't let him in. Yep. Blackfish has the ultimatum. Thoughts on that, Fucking Kyle? Old Man Frey, right? Yep. Is Blackfish going to give it up? What's going to happen there? So, yeah, I mean, I don't think so. I don't think I don't think the Blackfish is going to give it up. So they're going to hang Edmure. <sighs> that's, that's what they're saying here, is Edmure gets hung or if they don't give it up. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> I don't know what value Edmure brings for what that's worth. He didn't seem like he was that great. Yeah, I mean, he's just the the end of the Tully line, I guess, would be the only thing, right? He, he doesn't have an heir He yet. was always going to be the end, though. He still didn't have a wife. It's not like there's a wife out there. He just got married. What are you talking about? He just got married to the fr- to the lady that's trying to hang him. Well, he's the heir, I guess. If you're not extinguishing their house, you would, wanna, you would actually want to marry and maybe have his kid, like have kids with them so that... You know what I'm saying? Like, kind of like how they want to marry Sansa to get the claim to Winterfell. They're trying to do that legit, like, legit. I, I mean, I get your point. Yeah, I don't know if it really matters. Just, I think technically Blackfish wouldn't just go to him. Like, he's, he's, he would be Edmure's heir, right? Blackfish would be? Yeah, I mean, the next, the next male Tully, which is him, even though he's an old man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it just depends. Or you could just kill them all and then fuck it. We have a free castle now. Give it to the phrase. So. I just can't see them giving over River Run. But gotcha. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. It, it didn't sound like Bryden was like, "Oh, Edmure's great! Like I love that guy." <laughs> yeah, he's my he's my favorite nephew. I like River more than my nephew. Fuck him. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only real fighting left, really, that's going on is at Raven Tree, which is the seat of House. Okay. Bracken Blackwood, who are fighting the Brackens. Bracken's the one fighting them. Yeah, they're like the those the two are always going at it. This is the old Hatfield and McCoys, right? Okay. Yep. Duncan Egg, they're going at it. Even before Duncan Egg, they didn't like each other. Yeah. This is far back as people can remember. Even in House of the Dragon, Brackens and Blackwoods were getting into it in season one. Yeah. I mean, honestly, all I know is that those two families don't like each other. Like, it's, I don't know if there's, yeah, I don't know if it's any deeper than that. Yeah. They're closely located and always end up on opposite sides when there's a conflict. Yeah. That's kind of where it all stems from. Yep. Um, so the Hound kind of happy that Sansa gets away. That was, you know, good for her type of thing. Yep. And uh, oh, wait, they found He the does other say daughter. some fucked up stuff about her, though. He's like, man, I should have banged her. Well, well that, later that on. comes. That yeah, definitely later comes on. later on. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think that was more of a device than it was his Fair yeah, enough. true feelings. But Polliver says they're going to find her. He's like, the, the Lannisters are going to spend whatever money. It, they have a lot of money and they're going to spend it all to find Sansa if they need to. Like, she's important, is kind of what he says. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, yeah, she's supposed to be pretty. And the hound's like, yeah, the, she's a real proper lady. Nothing like her other sister. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, they found her, too. And they're like, what? <laughs> so Arya's a little confused of, of who they're sending to the Bolton's bastard. She's like, There's, I'm the only sister here. <laughs> yeah, Arya always thinks about it in a weird way. Like, wait a minute, they have the wrong, like, I think immediately, <laughs> wait a minute, they have the wrong girl. Arya's like, wait a minute, Sansa doesn't have another sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she didn't realize that it's her. Technically, or supposed to be her. And the hound just laughs, and they're like, "What's so funny?" He's like, if "I wanted you to know. I would have told you." Yeah. He's like, "Where's Salt Pants? Can I? Are there ships there? How are they doing? Yeah. Okay, what's going on there? That city hanging on." And they're like, "Who the fuck knows, man? What that place is Yeah, that place doesn't matter." Yeah. Uh, Maiden Pool. I think Jamie went through there with Brienne. It was totally fucked up. They're saying that's kind of getting starting to get going again. So it's kind of like the war is kind of over. Even when Arya gets the Salt Pants, she's like, "Yeah, this place looked completely plundered and looted." But it was like but inhabited they're, again. They're still marketing or trading, and the, I don't know the if it's still. Running. I think it's like the war happened. Everyone kind of fleed, maybe went to King's Landing or whatever, and now they're kind of 
the 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 bulk of the fighting's over. Everything's still fucked up, but people are kind of yeah. getting back to it. Yeah, yeah, they're coming back to the port at least. You know, people are yep. at least dropping shit off and picking stuff up. Or and here they say Maiden Pool, right? Because Randall Tarley has taken it over and locked up William Mooton, and he's got that getting back on its feet, I guess. Yeah, and, and this is basically when the conflict starts. Tigger's like, all right, like you're coming back with us. Yeah, sir, wouldn't like it if you don't. Uh, <laughs> If you if you left without yeah, saying he's goodbye, like, what, are you, what are you talking about leaving for, my man? You got to go back and see your brother. Like, yeah. it's pretty bugger much that, you. bugger him, bugger you. <laughs> <laughs> Bug off. I will say, I think the way this goes in the show is the hound basically like orders some chickens, and he's that Polliver's talking, and he's like, "You're a talker. Talkers make me thirsty." And he like drinks all, he, like drinks all of Polliver's wine. And he's like, and hungry. And, he, and Oliver keeps talking. And he's like, all I know is if another word comes out of your cunt mouth, I'm going to have to eat every chicken in this room. And then Oliver keeps talking. I think that's when he kicks the bench and everything pops off. <laughs> Just the chi- I'll have to send yeah. it to you after this one, Kyle. It's, it's one of my favorite it's parts a good, of the show. It's a good fight scene. Uh, but this one gets you know kicked off by the tickler reaching behind his back and throwing a, throwing a knife at the hound. Yep. Yep. So a fighting begins. Arya immediately... Throws the cup of wine at the squire. Yeah, and they did mention, I, I, I don't know why I paid attention to this, stone cups. Like, when he brings out the flagon, it's like he brought out the flagon and stone cups. I was like, damn, a stone cup? That's kind of cool. Is like, it cup I, stone? You would definitely buy a stone cup if you could. I know the flagon was stone. Flagon was stone as well. They didn't say that at the beginning, but they say it later when she drops it. But when Arya throws this cup at the squire, it's like it's not a it's not a red solo cup, right? This thing's a, it's yeah. a rock, a literal it rock. His, it like breaks his nose. And yeah. it like she like thinks he's taken care of. He's like, oh well, he's down. <laughs> Got him. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he she takes care of that. Polliver and the Hound are pretty much one v one ing for a little bit. The Tickler's doing some shit. She tries to throw her own knife. At the tickler? I think she throws another cup. Yeah. She did him with a Maybe cup. Maybe she throws another cup and misses. Yeah, or it bounces and then off. She and does he does throw. He dodged, yeah. She does throw a knife, yeah. That, like, glanced. It, it, hilt, the hilt hit his arm, and he didn't even bother. I mean, yeah, that's got to be harder than it looks, right? Like, I don't know why For you would sure. think to throw your knife at somebody. Yeah. Like, here's my weapon, and then, oh, no, now my weapon is over there within his reach. Have you guys axed through yet? Did you guys go axed I've never tried that. Throwing? Seems like it'd be cool. I mean, I've I've thrown axes not at like one of those spots, just like fucking around in the woods, though. Like, did you ever like stick it to a tree? Yeah, but like I had no form. I just do it a hundred times yeah. and stuck three yeah. times. I mean, or like you, when you do it, like they like kind of coach you it up, and like you almost like coax it to the wall. Like you don't like wind up and like fire that thing. Yeah. Like if you have a nice like rhythm, it'll like boom right into yeah. the wall kind of i feel like but, i looked up a so. youtube video one time and like what sucks the, it like broke my heart the basic the, the, i feel like the first thing it said was like okay it works best from like this exact distance like four and a half to five and a half feet for it yeah, was like might have been like, like a knife or whatever and it's like you want to aim yeah, for how two many and flips a half it rotations can do. exactly so yeah. it's like all about trying to get the, the right number of rotations in it to land at the right time and i'm like that sucks so like the people in movies who are just like throwing knives all over they're the place, just like whipping them left and right. <laughs> it's like yeah. they're all at five feet or whatever. It's like no, go on. Were they all? <laughs> do you ever see the ones where they like throw them and they like go straight through there, like and throw a knife and it just <laughs> yeah. like, doesn't tumble doesn't at all? It just goes it straight all? at yeah. somebody. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, that's not how it works. But uh, uh, while we're on the tangent, one cool thing about the Lord of the Rings is like there's kind of this intro section called concerning hobbits where the, they kind of just say like everything about hobbits, like oh they like to chill and do nothing and and smoke and eat food and drink beer and farm and garden and shit like that. And yeah, just uh, explaining the race. Yeah. One of the weird things that's in there is like, Oh, they're, they have big feet and they're really good at throwing stones, which just seems like, okay, like a nothing, like kind of like a quiet person thing, but it comes up like throughout the books, like they're in like a tough situation and like a character like nails a stone throw that like, you'd be like in game of Thrones, you're like, really? <laughs> Arya was able to nail that throw like all, three for three in the, like here. She's missing most of her throws, right? Like she gets one misses two. So I think it's just kind of cool how like that is a skill of hobbits is being good at like throwing stones or whatever off topic, but Arya's okay. half hobbit. <laughs> all right. Um, so yeah, some fighting goes on. The hound is drunk noticeably and he's uh, taking some blows, right? He got, Slashed on the thigh, slashed on the ear and the neck, right? Yeah, he's not looking good. She can tell he's he's not in a winning position. Yeah, getting fucked up. And just as she's about to help, here comes the squire. Grabs her arm. 
He's just monologuing. This guy is an idiot. Yeah, grabs her. She grabs his weapon, right? Yeah. And stabs him with his own weapon. Straight off his belt. Right from his yeah. sheath to the belly. Yeah. Swap pop. He didn't monologue too much. He just like kind of grabs and he's like, are you the puppy's puppy? And she's like, stab. That's yeah, like, that's, that was too much. <laughs> too much monologue. Yeah, I mean, he thinks he's cool. Too much, yeah, he it's doesn't not like a whole speech doing. or anything. Just like one little insult. Well, he had a knife in his belt and decided to grab her by the arm instead. Yep. And then he got disarmed and stabbed in the belly. Yep. I mean, he's probably drunk, though, too. Like, I mean, they said he was drunk, so. But, idiot. So he's gone, and now... The hound is backed into a corner. Ari has the tickler's knife in the wall. So she has she still has a knife st- too. She threw hers. Yep. Stabbed now him she with does. his. Now she has the tickler's. Well, yeah. she had the other guy's knife. Yeah. 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 Uh, the hound pulls a little trick to get Holliver. Not like he just kind of pushes uh, the bench at him. Right. There's a little dialogue. I didn't write it down. Yeah. I have the end here as a quote right, right before that bit. Okay. You're drunk, said Holliver. Might be, but you're dead. Foot lashed out and caught the bench. Driving it hard into Polliver's shins. Somehow the bearded man kept his feet, but the hound ducked under his wild slash and brought his own sword up in a vicious backhand cut. Blood splattered on the ceiling and walls. The blade caught in the middle of Polliver's face, and when the hound wrenched it loose, half his head came with it. The tickler backed away. Arya could smell his fear. The short sword in his hand suddenly seemed almost a toy against the long blade the hound was holding, and he wasn't armored either. He moved swiftly, light on his feet, never taking his eyes off Sandor or Clegane. It was the easiest thing in the world for Ari to step up behind him and stab him. Is there a gold hidden in the village? She shouted as she drove the blade up through his back. Is there silver? Gems? She stabbed twice more. Is there food? Where's Lord Beric? She was on top of him by then, still stabbing. Where did he go? How many men were with him? How many knights? How many bowmen? How many? How many? How many? How many? How many? How many? Is there gold in the village? Her hands were red and sticky when Sandor dragged her off him. Enough, was all he said. He was bleeding like a butchered pig himself and dragging one leg when he walked. Yeah. This isn't quite how the show goes, is it? Jeff. No, she, uh, do you remember in the show when... She kills Polliver. Yeah, but it's, and it's like Lem. Not Lem. Not Lem. Lami. Or, uh, Lami. Lami? Lami. Lami. Lami gets stabbed in the neck with needle. Yeah, th- that happens in the books too. Lami Greenhands, Arya's friend, his leg was hurt when they got captured by everybody. And he's yeah, like, yeah. "You need to carry me." And Polliver's like, "Carry you?" And he s- stabs yeah. Lami. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. got, we got you, man. Yeah, no. he's like, "No, no use to us." Uh, the tickler isn't as big in the books. He's in or in the show. He's like in one scene where he tortures somebody, but like he doesn't have the whole like, "Is there gold hidden in the village?" thing. So they couldn't really do that in the show. So they did the she recreated Polliver with like the. Oh, was your, is leg your leg hurt? Do you need me to carry you? And she just stabbed him. Okay, <laughs> and yeah. She just, she just stabbed him in the throat. <laughs> yeah. This one is way more like... <laughs> yeah. <American laughs> yeah, unhinged. <psycho>. Yeah. <laughs> unhinged, yes, is a good way to say it. Yeah. Yep. So they go back to the squire. He's bleeding out from his gut wound. Well, and... well hang on. I don't, I, don't think, I, I don't know if we're done with that, right? Like, um, like I guess that's like the first time the hound i guess has seen her do this kind of thing right and like for her to step in without even anything from him right says a lot too about where they're at as well i think like saving him basically like fighting for him well not even that i, I mean just like she she kind of like saves him yeah well she never killed like, anyone at before, the beginning of the chapter she was- she's like i could just run away would, would you say nelson i don't think she's ever killed anyone before in front of him but i think she had like during the fight at the I mean, twins, he knows she's she's pretty hardcore, right? I think like that he even says that where it not like us not like her little sister. Well, I think she was throwing rock <laughs> again, it's kinda of funny, it's what Arya does. She yeah. throws stuff. But she yeah, was throwing the guys rocks, at the gate. And I think helping the hound. Like I think there was a guy yeah. who was gonna hit him and she like distracted him until the hound I mean, him to be fair though, like that is a situation it's, there it's where like different, she had for sure. to, I think. Yeah, it's different for sure. This one, like she at the beginning she's talking about how she could leave. Yeah, I mean she's psycho. She's just mur- like straight and then, murdering like, this guy. He's in the middle of this fight here and, and she cho- well, I guess I mean she also did choose to kill somebody off her list instead. So that that kind of lends into yeah. it as well, right? Like our list. This it, this has been a main objective for her. Yeah, I think there's a lot of history of leading her into this and like she's got all these people obviously on the list and she hasn't been able to really do anything about it and like this is her first opportunity and just everything i think has was released in this moment like all the hate oh for sure but she doesn't have any qualms with the boy either when he's like hey this is this one's you 
The funny thing is, also, the boy's like, mercy, sir, and the hound punches him. Yeah. <laughs> like, while he's dying, he's like, don't call me sir. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Stop <laughs> calling me sir. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at that point, it's like, fuck it. Like, all right. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I already did the, the, the deed. I might as well finish it off. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so she goes back. She goes back to Polliver, and she checks out the, the third blade, which is this where she says it feels good in her hand. Yeah, she, he's like, this one's yours. And she's like, she knew what that meant. Arya went to Polliver and knelt in the blood long enough to undo his sword belt. Hanging beside the dagger was a slimmer blade, too long to be a dirk, too short to be a man's sword, but it felt just right in her hand. You remember where the heart is? The hound asked. She nodded. The squire rolled his eyes. Mercy. Needle slipped between his ribs and gave it to him. Then, add a boy by Sandor, and clip the gold. Let's get out of here. Yeah, I thought it was uh, interesting that the squire was like a rich, or of like a pretty high-born... De- to send, I would say. Uh, he's like, hey, I, my family has money, like, we'll pay, like, get me to a maester type of thing. Like, I, I don't know who he is or where, what family knows. I don't even know if you do. He but definitely claims to be, yeah. To be with these two sellswordish people. They get his cloak later, and his cloak has mm, a green arrow green and a white field. With an so arrow. I looked it up. It says yeah. Sar- House Sarsfield. First time I'm hearing of it. Mm, so, okay. probably not that big of a house. They have a logo, right? Like, that well, means something. House. He's not lowborn. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They have a logo. Yeah. They're a franchise. They're they're getting invited to the All-Star <laughs> game. They get to send a representative. <laughs> yep. So while she's... Not that it ever matters because she leaves the money with the Hound, but later in the chapter, she does say how much she finds on all the bodies. She finds also confusing, and I'm sure we've gone over this, and I have a thing in the notes, so we don't have to get into it. She says one stag, 12 coppers, eight silvers. Is, eight, is silvers not the same as stags? And then she says two stags and three dragons. So in total, three stags, eight silvers. Maybe they were like of a different mint. Like it was like like just silver pieces, and then like yeah. I don't know the the capital it turns them into That's stags fair. type of thing. I think if I remember again, I don't, I don't want to look it up and get it too far into it, but if I remember right, there was three silver pieces. It was like stags, silver crowns, and maybe just silver is the third one or something. Yeah, different weights maybe. So all right, Hound's like shit. This must mean Gregor's man hold the ford. We got to get out of here before we get seen because I, I, he doesn't say they definitely just killed two important people, right? Like, I mean, they're, they're fairly high up in, in Gregor's crew for sure. And, and the bodies are out, right? So like someone's going to come, they probably know that this is like their drinking spot or one of them, right? So, or just where they were or where they were going, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. So they get out and they get off King's road and they start heading to the salt pans to try to get to the veil by sea. What's going on, Nuss? I'm trying to... For me, it's map time. I was trying to pull up the map, but it was being weird. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to say that the veil... The veil, every time we always talk about the veil, it always gives me the Shire kind of vibes. Peaceful. So back to the Hobbit. I don't know. I mean, life is crazy, but that's name. probably because she's kept him out of the war. Like, she is crazy, but her one thing is let's not get involved, and because of that, they don't have burned towns all over yeah, the place. Yeah, it's like this peaceful little enclave kind <laughs> yeah, of... That, yeah. Did yeah. it give you any but hope, I, I mean, Kyle? When they, when they mentioned going to the Vale for a little... No, I I mean, so we I guess we can get into it because it, it, it kind of ties into the end still. But um, yeah, I mean, I thought she would get to meet up with Sansa somewhere for what that's worth. Like I said, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll talk about it at the end, I think. Yep. It's, it's probably the more apt time to... Yeah, we'll get it at the end. Save save the meat and potatoes. We'll we'll save the meat and we'll do map time. So I, map time right now. I got it up to show uh, these the map, guys. On uh, the map, on uh, the map. So this, uh, like I map. said, this ta- is taking place at end of the crossroads. We knew we were kind of out here somewhere in, on like the west side of the mountains of the moon in the last Arya chapter, right? They were like serving at some random village and basically they kicked them out because they're like, yeah, we know who you are. You bring violence. Plus, there's too much shit popping off on this side with like tibbet's back basically with steel so you can't go that way <laughs> so that's when he was ba- I mean, running let, me, that shit. let me just say for them to be like we don't know shit about the salt pans and it's like right up the road like that's not that far the the cities are drawn way out of proportion in this right like i know but still it's not like it's not like it's not like he asked like something about i don't know i mean it's not gonna help if somebody's not looking at the map but old anchor or something you know some some far away yeah or like white harbor right it's not like he's like what's going on at white harbor like this is it's right up the street i mean this one we do get kind of c- pretty conclusive like distance on it takes Arya six days plus the one she's yeah, that's pretty going close slowly. in this at this yeah speed. i guess you're right she, she should at least they would at least know if there's ships and stuff there i mean but to that point there is only one real ship there when Arya gets there so it's like and that was only going to be there for a day or two. So you wouldn't have 
that knowledge six days in advance unless it's like popping. But understood. You would know right, what, what right. state it's in. Doesn't really matter. But yeah, that's what they're at. They're at the end of the crossroads. The Ruby Ford is pretty much like the end of the crossroads, just like on this river, which again is like why the days don't really matter. This inn isn't on the river. It's more like actually up here at these crossroads, but they just put it over here because there's a town there. So the inn should be like more actual here where the crossroads are. Okay. Like up on the where Lord's yeah. Hairways town is. And the Ruby Ford gotcha. is kind of where the actual end of the crossroads is. It's kind of like where the where you where the crossing of this river is. Okay. That's where they were gonna go, thinking maybe King's Road. I don't know why, maybe to get to Maidenpool and sell. And that's kind of what they're talking about. It's like, oh, Maidenpool's popping off again. It's kind of what they said. But again, to do that, you'd have to cross the Ruby Ford. So they're not doing that. The last thing I kind of wanted to mention while we had this up, these guys said when Ari gets this salt pans later and she's talking to the captain, she's like, take me north. And he's like, no, we don't want to go north. Like all this north is pirates and ice. He's like, last time we were coming past Crack Claw Point, we saw a bunch of pirates going north. So Crack Claw Point's right out here. Why might they have seen a bunch of pirates going north? All right, Nelson. I know. I knew you were gonna set this one up. I feel like this one's easy though, right? Like that's Stannis. Yeah, it's probably Stannis because his fleet is yeah. pirates, pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah. Good work, Kyle. Just pointing it out with the map because it's again kind of those one of those minute no, no, details that's that you that's can kind of probably piece together. I said maybe I should just accept it as a win and feel smarter about it. Yeah, exactly. And again, there's no con- no concisive proof, but I feel like it's a very solid. Definitely guess. first read, I would have been like, "Who the fuck's who the who are the fuck are the pirates?" <laughs> yeah. Like I wouldn't know. I would have read right over it. Yep, that's in the map time. So they start riding off. The the Ford they notice is back to its more calm self. Uh, yeah, since the rains have subsided. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, back to normal. And he, he, yeah, he gets off. They they find a spot where they can kind of chill, and he's like, "All right, all right, go get all this stuff." He starts boiling wine in his helmet, and uh, she gets a couple of sticks, and they start <laughs> boiling. And he's uh, trying to cauterize his wounds. I don't even know that. It's just like cleaning them and banding during them. Yeah. It's like, well, you don't have any, it's like their antibiotics is just boiling wine. Antiseptic. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Like trying to wash them out. It's, it's brutal <laughs> stuff, man. Also like the, so they mentioned that they wrapped his wounds and they left the end. He took the squire's cloak, put it against his head. It got like blood soaked, right? Like immediately. Yeah. Then yeah. when they get to here, they're like boiling wine. He's like, okay, go rinse this off and, Cut, cut it strips. into strips. That's what they used to bind his wounds. Is like, oh yeah, the rag just a that, piece of a piece that Arya of just rinsed off find. in the muddy river. <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, uh, throw, throw some more dirt in there. Just put some dirt <laughs> yeah. on it. It'll be all right. Like, I oh, mean, yeah. to be fair, it's probably better than nothing, for especially sure, after but, boiling in the wine. Yeah, in the like wine. for a while, it's probably pretty sterile. Yeah, but still, it's like you're right. You're right. That's actually a fair point by Kyle. I mean, that helmet was like on fire it said, it said like the nose was like blackened and yeah. stuff like i mean it seemed like it was rolling boiling like yeah should kill it, almost anything. it wasn't they weren't poaching eggs they were yeah which again is a moment for the hound right because he is like the i hate fire guy and again boiling wine yeah, isn't true. quite fire but but his helmet was sitting in the fire i'm sure the imagery right yeah there's a parallel there for sure connection yeah all right so they she pours it all over his wounds he's a pretty tough dude he did scream with the ear or the neck the last one, the one on his but head. It, it, uh, okay. Because his cut was on the burn side of his head, so she's just pouring burly, boiling wine. And I'm sure well, that after this many years up, later, it not, just scarred. Yeah. It's not that much difference, but yeah, still. This is probably not even, like, I'd be surprised if there was, like, nerves it's probably still more sensitive. Just, like, the memory of it, though. Like, it would probably, probably feel, nerves like. on that side anymore? I don't know. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point, but, I mean, clearly, he passes out, right? But. Yeah. And he bites down so hard that he, he snaps the stick, which... Depending on how big the stick is, like that'd be impressive too. Imagine like <laughs> biting through, like because it wasn't like a little twig. Like I'm, I'm assuming like yeah, I don't he know. made her go back a couple times. Like that's not a yeah, good stick. Just get the right size. Stick. Yeah, something that was gonna hold up to his bite. It's like when I'm with my sister and she's bringing back like twigs for I'm trying to roast a marshmallow. Like come on, go get, go get a real <laughs> stick. Yeah. Yep. So she goes to sleep. She thinks about her list, and then she just reflects on Joff not being on it anymore. And, not even wishing that she killed him, but just wishing that she could have seen him die. <laughs> yeah. So she says the list, right? Sir, you know, I always got to say it because especially now because it's changed, right? So she says Sir Gregor, mm-hmm. Dunson, Raph the Sweetling, Sir Illyn, Sir Mare, and Queen Cersei. It feels weird to leave off Polliver and the Tickler and Joffrey too. She's like, like you said, I wish I could have been involved with that one. And then there's she thinks about John and like, let's go to the wall, which kind of comes a thing later. But then she's like, fuck, I left off the Hound too. 
Yeah, she forgot. Yeah. She forgot. Which, I mean, was kind of, it felt like a little bit of a turning point, but then she, she added him immediately. Yeah, exactly. She's like, fuck that. So the next morning, the hound wakes up Arya with a little kick to the boot. Uh, she was having a wolf dream. Uh, we don't get any. She was chasing somebody up a hill, right? On a, a dude. On yeah, a horse. horse. It was a, a riderless horse. Oh, okay. So it's trying to get some meat, but uh, that's all we get. They rode off, and the hound struggling a lot worse this day. And uh, it it comes to a point where he has to stop, and he falls off this time, Drogo style. Yeah, yeah. not good. I didn't even think about yeah, it. Yeah, he's that, not it's kind of like good. a parallel. Like Danny kind of was like on her own after that. True. Yeah, I didn't even. That's a good point. Similar age difference and everything too. Yeah. And doesn't she like kind of actually like kill him at the end of it, or is that just a show only thing? They do some pillow talk. They do the pillow show, talk. She puts a pillow the... on his face. I don't. Maybe, maybe that is a show. Drogo. Only. Yeah, I think she does. I think yeah. she does because he was a vegetable, right? It's like, either that yeah. or he's a vegetable when he, she puts him on the fire, which when she burns him to her. death. Like that's even <laughs> that's even yeah, more inhumane. So she probably killed him first. Yeah. Oh, you so, can't move or anything. We're just going to burn you. You called him a sunflower. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember that. that was what, yeah. <laughs> you just, you said, you yeah. just stared at the sun Follows all day. Sun. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Arya's sniffing around like Maester Lewin used to do, and his his leg is smelling foul. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, Arya like, is funny, like the way she thinks about stuff, but like it gets the job done, right? Like she's like, huh, I don't know what Lewin was actually doing. Like he never told me what he was doing, but he did I'm just this, yeah. Do what he did. Like, oh, you're cut. Let me let me sniff it. She's like, huh. I don't know what I'm looking for, but that does not smell good. <laughs> not that she does yeah. anything about it, but <laughs> shit stinks. Yeah. Uh, and she pulls out needle and uh, thinking a little bit of uh, of mercy, right? Yeah. She's like, why don't I just kill this guy? Like. I killed that boy in the end. All he did was touch me and call me the puppy's puppy. This yeah. guy killed Micah, my friend. Like I hate this guy. But she does kind of get to the point where she's like, I didn't really fucking know Micah. Yeah. Like, I don't know why I'm we so just, mad about Micah. Played, uh, we just played Sword a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> who, wait, who the fuck is Micah? <laughs> it's like, wait, 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 what was his name? <laughs> it was like a whole character. It's like her whole character development was based off of Micah. Now she's like, wait. Do I even I like actually Micah? really know him? Yeah, <laughs> I think this is actually really interesting though, right? Because it's not like Arya, like she doesn't give a fuck about killing people. It's not just the boy later when she's trying to sell the horse. I think this is it's kind of a throwaway line, she, right? She thinks I think it's really important. She's like, I, sh- I don't want to have to kill her. Yeah, she was like, yeah, if there were people around, I would just kill this lady right now. It's like so she uh. doesn't care about killing random people, which tells you like she's over it now. Yeah, which tells you like the hound isn't just like. To me, she's like, when she's thinking about the hound, there's like the good side, and then there's the bad side, and then there's neutral. Yeah. That horse lady was neutral. She had no, Arya has no qualms with killing neutral, innocent people. Hey, she's got places to get. <laughs> the hound is supposedly on the bad side, that's why he's on the list, but she can't, she can't bring herself to kill him, which means actually in her mind, he's probably on the good side, right? She just doesn't know it. It's kind of how I see that. The lady is also kind of haggling her, which... Pisses her oh, off. Oh, yeah, she's a little taking bit. advantage of her <laughs> That's for sure. True. She dips a little bit into the bad side. She might have been on the list. That but day. it's a it's a it's a dog eat dog world. <laughs> I mean, but to kill somebody over like some money and threatening to take you to jail, but yeah. still like, also uh, tell me if I'm seeing too many connections to Duncan Egg, because you know I love seeing connections, but like it felt kind of Duncan Egg ish when they found the spot with the willows under the willow tree where they're like kind of resting for the night and they boil the wine or whatever. Only you would remember that. So and then also yeah, when she all. goes to sell the horse to try and like get on the ship because Dunk has to go sell his in the first book has to sell his horse to get armor for the tournament. Yeah. You're the only you're the only one drawing so again, I, I 100% see I could be reading into it too much but yeah. You're the only one that remembers those details here. Well, so. Dunk, Dunk I know. Bagel. And too you many cry times. every time. So. It gets better every time. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, <laughs> Alright. So the Hound is like sees her with Needle and is like do you remember where the heart is? Like kind of accepting it right? Like this is uh, asking for it. Ask like, come on, like I'm dying. Like, let's go. Get, let's get over it. I've accepted it. I've accepted it a long time. It's, it's probably a thing where like we kind of. I think I mentioned it maybe last time or a couple. You know, soldiers like go into it like accepting death, right? Like it's still kind of the, the way you let yeah. go. It's said in a couple movies. Like he's probably like, all right, fuck it. Like I've I've lived. I fought. Like this is how I go. Get also, if there's me. anyone in the books that we've seen that's a realist it's the hound like he calls it like it is so right he's not sugarcoating anything he knows like he's in the middle of nowhere there's no mace that's gonna save his ass fevering and and festering in his leg i see i think i think you guys are getting tainted by the show here i thought i read it more of as like he's like if you're gonna do it do it right like uh 
fucking little girl. <laughs> like, you well, that, know, like, so that's where I was saying that I think him, like, now coming at, like, the Hound, kind of, I think he's trying to make her angry by, like, oh, Micah, uh, you know, yeah, I killed him, like, he made a stupid little noise when I slashed him in half, and, oh, your sister, like, yeah, I should have... I should. I only took yeah. a song. Like I should have took her too, and like yeah. had my way with her. I, I I thought he was just doing that to like again get Arya to this angry part where he, she's gonna like fucking start hacking him up because he's like yeah. fuck it. Okay, that's just how I took it. But the qu- and then the question that I honestly have is like kind of like what I was alluding to before. Does she kind of end up being like you know what I kind of actually like this guy. I can't bring myself to kill him, or is it the opposite where he's like, do you mean to make me beg? Give me the gift of mercy, Avenger little Michael. And she's like, Micah, stepped away from you don't deserve the gift of mercy. Does she, I, I think she, so the other side is like, does she actually realize that it's a gift? That it would be worse for him to sit here just under this tree, not able to get back up on his yeah. horse and just rot I, I to think, death? I think she does recognize that as, as a gift now. I feel like it's both, Nelson. It's a little bit of both. I, th- I think that's I, fair. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know the answer. I either. agreed. Right. I, I, I'm going to agree with Kyle. Yeah. So she rides off, doesn't even look back. Again, it's cold. He's like, a real wolf would finish a wounded animal. And she she doesn't say it, but she's like, maybe a real wolf will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully a real wolf will. <laughs> and all she says is, you shouldn't have hit me with that axe. You should have saved my mother. And she Bam, just rides bounce. off without without even looking back. No look back is a, is a cold move. She is so cold. Dude, Arya is way too young to be as cold as she is. Like just murdering, literally murdering people. Like, oh, I would have killed this fucking horse lady if there wasn't ten people around. <laughs> like, oh yeah, leaving this dude to die. She's like ten, right? Yeah, she's ten. Yeah. So she rides off. Six days later, she comes to a town off the water, uh, starting to smell a little a little salt in the air, and uh, she notices three ships: two river galleys, and then one purple. Or uh, are they called river galleys? I think. And then yeah. one purple, yeah. one purple galley. Yep. Which. Is that the one that Sansa's on? Did we uh, hear a description of Sansa's boat? Definitely not that one, because when I typed in the name, it didn't show up. But we got the name of Sansa's boat. Yeah, it's like mermaid something. There's a mermaid oh, on yeah, it. I think you're right. I just remembered. I feel like we know this one, though. I just can't remember where. And you're not going to tell me. Is this one Cat was on at the beginning or Again, something? Again, this one was the first time in my notes. So I actually don't. Okay. I couldn't have this one before. So we might have seen it. But so if we maybe did, we, we don't know this name. one. I, haven't, I wouldn't know. It's not my department. Oh well, then that's that's good news then. I guess then I'm not supposed to know. This. So I thought she, I that was kind of the my, I guess prediction. I thought it was going to be that she'd be running into Sansa here sooner rather than later, because they're kind of both doing the same thing over here. But maybe that's too convenient. Both Sansa's on is the Merlin King. The Merlin King, but in there, I think maybe there's a mermaid on the front of it. But there's a mermaid with a crown on the front. Yep. Yeah. So exactly. So it's not. It wasn't this one. This is a gilded purple boat. Called the Titan's Daughter. Yep, which we find out. So she she was rolling up, and she's like, "Damn, I definitely don't have enough money. Got to sell Craven." This is when she gets kind of shorted by the lady, who's like, "I thought it was funny that the lady's like, well, you're definitely not a highborn girl. Like you, you <laughs> yeah, stole, I know this isn't you your stole horse. This horse. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, actually, <laughs> yeah. quite the yeah, opposite, exactly. lady. But whatever. <laughs> I should I should kill you just for that." <laughs> yeah, and she uh, she goes up to the the galley and talks to the captain. Yep, uh, stout gray haired man. He's wearing purple, just purple everything. She gives him the money. He's like, "Hey, I want a cabin, or I don't even want a cabin. I'll work. Just take me to the wall." And he's like, "No, nah, we're not going there. There's pirates there." He's like, "Sorry, girl, this ain't happening." And he turns around and like walks away. And she's like, "Wait a minute, what ship is this?" And he says, "The Titan's daughter out of Bravos." Then I have this last little bit as a quote. Oh wait, I have something from Bravos. Yep. Yeah, and that was that was what that token was, right? It was like free one free passage to Bravos. I don't think we knew. I'll re- I can go read the quote from when we got it. Uh, yeah, I think Jack had just said like, "Here's this coin." I thought it was like, like if you need help or something or from a Bravosi. Maybe maybe it was like if you need help from a Bravosi or something like that. I'll go. I'll go read it in a sec. Let's hit this quote first. Yeah. All right. Wait. Arya said suddenly, "I have something else." She had stuffed it down inside her small clothes to keep it safe, so she had to dig deep to find it. While the oarsmen laughed, and the captain lingered with obvious impatience. One more silver would make no difference, child, he finally said. It's not silver. Her fingers closed on it. It's iron. Here. She pressed it into his hand, the small black iron coin that Jack and Hagar had given her. 
so worn the man whose head it bore had no features. Probably worthless, but... The captain turned it over and blinked at it, then looked at her again. This? How? Jack had said to say the words, too. Arya crossed her arms against her chest. Valor Morgolis, she said, as loud as if she'd known what it meant. Valar Doherdis, he replied, touching his brow with two fingers. Of course, you shall have a cabin. Nice accent, Nels. I tried to throw a little something in there. Yeah, go find this Jack and quote. Uh, so here's my notes. He asks if she wants to come with him. This is when Jack is leaving. She says, I can't. I have to go to Winterfell. He's in there. We have to part ways. And he gives her a gift, a small coin. She bites it and thinks it's too hard to be anything but iron. She asks if she can buy a horse with it. He tells her it's not for buying horses. She asks, what good is it for then? He says, as well as what good is life? What good is death? If the day comes when you would find me again, give that coin to any man from Bravos and say these words to him. Valar Margulis. Yep. Okay, so it's to get her to him then. Is where get her she's... to Jackin. Yep. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Hmm. 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 <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, no, that actually like so this that that quote definitely helped, right? I don't know, man. I like I and what what was his name? Shit. The guy that trade intern. Sirio Farrell. Yeah, Sirio, he was he was also Bravosi, correct? The first sword of Bravos. Yeah. So, like, maybe maybe this can continue her training. Arya continues on. Catching cats. Yeah. All right. So, I feel like I've told this to Kyle, kind of a weird spot to have this conversation, but I'm going to throw it out there. We're going to do it. Uh, I feel like I've told you this before, that the, the last two books are kind of split character-wise, right? Where we don't get all the characters yeah. in, in all the books. So, now that we're getting kind of towards the end of this book, and, like, there's definitely characters we have seen for the last time in this book. It's interesting to think that, and I honestly don't remember which which one of the next two books Arya shows up in, which is a good. Oh wait, so you're saying this next book and the book one, the book after you're saying? There's the only two, two that... more books. They're split, right? So there's only two more books out so far. It's, it's really <laughs> one book that's split in two. Holy no, shit! No, yeah. No, right. So one, it takes place at the same time. The next two books, exactly, and they're just different characters. So like some of the characters that we have already done reading, right? So like. We don't, we're not getting any more brand chapters this book and no more Danny's. I know Spoiler. those two at least, right? Like, okay. so who knows? We might not see some of those, these characters for, it's not like we're going to see them in feast in like another 10 chapters or whatever, right? It might be yeah. 170 chapters. till huh. we see some of these people. Huh. Yeah. So it's kind of like an interesting point to point out for some of these storylines that are kind of coming to a conclusion at the end of the storm. Yeah, I can see. I yeah. can see why that You're would make some people mad. You're gonna have a whole lot of fun. You're gonna have a whole lot of fun trying to remember all the details and names. That yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll pick those back up in, in two the, years. In two years, and yeah, try to remember that. So, uh, and I honestly don't remember which one Arya is in, so I'm not trying to like allude to anything. Yeah, yeah, with that, I got you. But uh, uh, yeah, and and it's not all. Not all characters are like that. There are a few characters that that do appear in both books, but it's not. I got. It's you. not the majority. I, I get. So. I get what you're saying, though. You're you're just warning me, preparing me for, for the fact that some of these may remain open for quite some time. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So. Cool. Well, we'll see Kyle right. on the next one for... Did we see it? Is it Samwell? It's Samwell. Samwell, seven. No way Sam said that many. Maybe five? Four. Sam, four. It's been a while since we've seen our boy. Yeah. I knew he. we didn't get many Sams. He Last we saw him, he came through the hole in the ground and met Bran in the middle of the night, right? Yep. Great memory by you. It's interesting, yes, because last time we saw him wasn't a Sam chapter. That was a Bran chapter. It was a Bran seen, chapter, yeah. Last time we saw Sam in a Sam chapter was him basically meeting Cold Hands. Wait, what's that? He was, he was killed somebody, right? The Whites attacked. He was with Gilly. Oh, yeah, that's right. Whites yeah, yeah, yeah. That, he, that, that dude, that random... Fucking weird dude on the horse showed up. <laughs> on, a, yeah. on an elk. On an elk. On an elk. On an elk, on an elk yeah. horse. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yep. So it's been a while. But again, it, I always like it too when we see one character from another character's perspective because we feel like we've been Sam. It hasn't been that long since we've been with Sam because we saw him at the wall. Yeah, it's cool. Brand. It's kind of cool to do that too. Yep. Experience it from the other side. So we'll see where Sam's at next time for Sam 4. We'll see Kyle then. We'll see the rest of you guys in the spoiler section. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. Bye, Kyle. Bye, Kyle. Later, nerds. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert!
Bye, Kyle. See you on the Bye, next Kyle. one for Sam Well Four. Thanks for hanging out with us. Jeff, anything for Aria 13? I don't think there's any hot takes in this chapter. I don't have anything again. We can other talk about the, the fate the of hound, some of the characters. Uh, what's that? We can talk about the future fate of some of the characters. The Hound is what you were about to say. That's what I was alluding to. The Hound is still alive. Yeah. Well, yeah, not confirmed. It's confirmed. Very strongly agreed stranger. in the fandom. Stranger. Well, that's true. They have the Stranger at the Quad Isle. But yes, exactly. The main theory for the Hound is that he is the grave digger at the Quad Isle. And again, we'll see that in the next book when Brienne passes there. I wonder if Kyle will catch it again. It's one of the things that I feel like you don't have a snowball's chance in hell of catching on a first read through unless you're reading it with a lunatic like me who's like pointing out every single thing along the way. Like, you know what, what I mean? Is, what, is, what is the description? Like, oh, there's a, way too big of a war horse that like isn't meant to be here. He's bigger than Brienne. His face is covered. He's walking with a limp. Strangers there. The fact that strangers there is a huge. How hint do they know it's stranger? Do they say it's stranger? Yeah. The the what's his name? The leader of the Quiet Isle. The elder brother. I think it's the elder brother. He tells Brienne, "I found the Hound. He was dying. I buried him. Like, or the Hound is at peace, or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. I led stranger back to the Quiet Isle. Metaphorically saying, like, uh, the Hound died. The but Hound we, is dead. Uh, Sandor, exact. Sandor is alive. Yeah. And because, especially because he leaves the hound helm behind, which then gets stolen by Rorg, who goes and raids Salt Pans, and everyone thinks it was the hound because he did it wearing the hound's helm. Yeah. But the fact that Stranger there is a huge point because we hear that Stranger is like a horrible temper. Like no one can really deal with Stranger except for the hound. And to get to the Quiet Isle, it's kind of like getting to that tower, Queen's Crown, that Bran was hiding at, where you have to walk on this like hidden, windy path under the water. So, like, if you don't have good control of this horse, you're not going to be able to lead a horse onto the Quiet Isle. And they have Stranger on the Quiet Isle. So the thought is the Hound obviously needed to be there to help do that. Yeah. There's, another, Makes there's also a dog with him. The, the guy man digging the graves has a dog. Just just symbolic, symbolically the Hound? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Arya's going to Bravos. Her story gets even weirder. Definitely really weird for Arya from here on out. Um, I do like the whole like through line of mercy. I feel like I've I feel like I pointed this out like kind of in some Arya chapters in Clash of Kings that it felt like they were starting. I say they George was starting to sprinkle in that whole like mercy through line even back then. I can't remember any any examples off the top of my head, but I feel like I mentioned that we we've been mentioned that pretty yeah. early on. Even I think you I thought you mentioned too like that like she goes by mercy at some point too as an alias right. I think that's a wins a winner chapter, but yeah, it's like the that's the one uh, wins a winner Aria chapter we have is she, her going by mercy. Yeah, yeah. And she thought about all of her aliases. I, I think the last chapter we had of her, or yeah, I think she, she said she was recently. she was no one. But I was this. I was that. Ari, was that Weasel. No one. Yeah, yeah. And no one was thrown in there. Yep. So we go to the faceless men people. Interesting because Jackin isn't there again. It's hard. It's to in old tell, town, right? We get an old town chapter. Yeah, right. So people think that the guy in Old Town, that's that's in the prologue, is Jackin, because the face that Jackin switches to matches the face of the guy in Old Town. Is it possible Jackin switched his face, went to Bravos? Right. So let's call uh the guy that's in Old Town, let's call him the Alchemist. Okay. Because I think that's what he goes by in that chapter, because he tells Pate he can turn gold into iron or iron into gold or whatever. So turn, give me a key, I'll turn it into gold. So I think he goes by the alchemist. Okay. So Jackin puts on the alchemist face. Isn't it? Most people assume that then when we see the alchemist face in Old Town, it's Jackin. Makes sense. Is it possible Jackin put on the alchemist face, went to Bravos, took off the alchemist face at the house of black and white, then he stayed at the house of black and white, somebody else put on the face of the alchemist, and then went to Old Town. You know what I'm saying? Basically, he went, dropped the face off. Somebody else took it and went to Old Town. Why would they need that face, though? Why couldn't they just use any face? You're right. I'm just saying it's weird because it, maybe it's not like this in the show. But the quote I read to Kyle, Jackin gave Arya a coin that says, hey, when you give this to somebody from Bravos, or give this to somebody from Bravos if you want to see me again. Mm -hmm. Well, Arya doesn't see this him is... again. He's in Old Town. She's in, well, unless it's kind of like the metaphorical no one me. You know what I mean? Who does she end up meeting? The waif and the kindly man, and and the the guy with a worm in his eye, right? Yeah, the kindly man. I I mean, it, it comes to like the point of um, you know, and I don't know if the show did it the right way, but like are like are they no one or, or are they all the same, right? Like, well, I think the idea is if you strip your identity, 
down to absolutely nothing. We're all aren't the same. you really the same? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's kind of like maybe like a monk mentality. And again, I don't know an- anything near enough about monks, but like, don't isn't that the whole monk thing? Like, give up all possessions and connections to the world and everything, right? Like at that point, if you have no connections or any like. Aren't you just all kind of like the same thing? I yeah, don't I don't maybe know. That, maybe that would be totally no against what they think, so I have no idea. I don't want to be offended anyone, but yeah, I don't know. The faceless men are just weird. Like I don't like. When was this old? When did when did he was he in Old Town first, and then he went to the Riverland? Like, are they well, like how how much magic do they have? Are they like fucking like zipping and bopping around a little <laughs> bit faster than most? I think Sam is one of the most anticipated Winds of Winter chapters because. People really want to know what the hell Jackin's up to. Like, okay, you wanted this coin. That's what the prologue's all about, is you getting this coin, the prologue of Feast. Then in the end of Feast, we see that you're still alive. You took the pig boy's face. So what are you doing here? And so people want the next Sam chapter mm, to find right, out right, what's he right. up to. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I, I, I kind of forgot that Jackin isn't the one in... Arya doesn't actually meet the Jackin that she met before. Yeah, because that's how it is in the show, or it seems in the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing is, there are theories, and I'm sure we'll get into it because it comes out in the books when Arya is there, is that the Faceless Men kind of caused the Doom of Valyria to maybe like get back at the Dragon yeah. Lords because they were the. I think we learned that the first Faceless Men was a, a slave in the mines. Yeah. And basically, right. they tell right. Arya that he he started giving the gift to the other slaves, and Arya is like, "No, that's not right." He should have given the gift to the masters who were like right. doing the bad things to the slaves. Yep, I remember. And the he's story. like, and he says something like, "Oh, they got theirs. They got the gift too, but that's a different story or something," which implies yeah. that they had something to do with it. I think there's also a prophecy somewhere that says Lannister gold caused the doom. How? How is that even possible? I just forget. I forget where I should know this, but there's a prophecy that says Lannister gold was involved in the doom. So I think a, a, a leading theory for this one is that Lannisters paid the faceless men to do the doom somehow. Were the Lannisters even the Lannisters when the doom of Valyria happened? I don't know. I, I should. I I'm not as that, t- that timeline's not checking out. I just feel like timeline timelines don't even matter. Well, to Lannisters me, but... have been Lannisters since Land the Clever, so they've been around a long, long time. Is that Before like Before Aegon, first... but but that okay. you're right. That Doom of Valyria is 500 years ago. So I mean, they were around then. Yeah, they were around then. My mm-hmm. bigger question is: Is the Faceless Men an organization by then set up in Bravos? Again, I guess that's true too. They should be. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah, I'm not even sure. Not much in this one. Next one, Sam. Good Sam. One is kind of the setting the seeds for the jot the election of who's going to be Lord Commander. Ooh, Which I've said this before, and we gone over this recently. But the last couple chapters are Sam, John, Tyrion, Sam, John, Sansa. A lot, of, a lot of Sam to finish it out. Yep. Out of the last six, besides the epilogue, four of them are Sam and John. So We're at the wall, a lot. Yeah, exactly. A lot to happen at the wall, which is kind of cool. And like, kind of like I said to Kyle, it sucks. Some of these characters, like Arya, I, I lied. I know Arya. Arya, I think, is one that's in both. She's in feast and dance. But I think there's two Arya chapters in like each one. Yeah, they're few and far between. Exactly. It's like not a lot. So it'll be a while till we see our girl again. And again, the cool thing about Sam and John in those books is we get Sam and Feast, John and Dance. So even though we don't get John chapters, we still see John a little bit. Sam gets sent away pretty early, but we at least see John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Sam's first chapter in Feast and John's first chapter in Dance are the exact, like it's Sam meets with John. And it's really cool because in Feast... It's so weird. I, it's going to be really weird to do. It's going to be weird to do it that far apart, but like in the combined reading, right, when you read them back to back, it's literally like you read Sam and then you read John, and it's like the exact same meeting back to back. You've read the same chapter twice. Yeah. From two different perspectives. It's kind of cool. Yeah. So, But we don't want to do that. I know some of the fans were kind of considering doing that, and I, and I could see it. The problem is there's so many new characters introduced yeah. that it makes it so even... We like, even went through the first couple chapters, right? And it's like... Like aren't the prologues new? Area Hotar and then like Eris, uh or uh Dampair. Dampair and uh yeah. the, the Cersei. King's Guardman is in the Cersei. Yeah. So again, like there's so many new characters that even if it's like characters we know, like say like in Feast, two Cersei chapters might come eight chapters apart, right? Which is like maybe a, a normal because there's about eight characters in the book, right? So maybe about eight to ten char- like is the average between chapters for a character. If you then throw in the chapters from Dance in there, now we're not seeing Cersei 
for 20 chapters, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like 20 chapters for us is, is months. So now Kyle's literally going to be never reading anything he remembers. Yeah. If we yeah, do the combined hard. reading. So that's part of why I want to do the normal reading. Just uh, the normal, like just do feast, then just do dance. Yeah. I think the norm, I think normally reading is, it is what it is. Like you just got to, I'm just going to have to refresh him on some shit as we go. The other thing is, this is where I started like going into the depths with the books for you, right? Uh, probably when you started like taking like your handwritten notes. Basically, it was kind of like that was just the spoiler section where I put like, oh, here's what I can talk to Jeff about, like spoiler wise. I guess I actually wasn't telling you spoilery stuff because I didn't want to spoil it. Wow, you were spoiling it along the way for me. That's I might have been. Who knows? The but, worst. All right, friend. we're rambling. Worst type of friend. We'll close all it right. here. If you're, you guys are listening this far, check out our House of the Dragons episodes coming out along the same time as these. Uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe. We haven't mentioned it in a while, but if you're listening on YouTube, we are on Spotify, iTunes, and anything else. If you're listening there, we're on YouTube. So check out your preferred platform. We'll see you on the next one for Sam 4. Bye. Bye.